Hello and welcome to another episode in the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be talking about objects and constructors. Let's start with objects. What exactly is an object? Well, an object is an instance of a class. They can be referred to as class instances, instance objects, or class objects. Now, we need to introduce a new word, which is called instantiation. Now, instantiation, also known as construction, is the realization of a predefined object. An instance of an object may be declared, given a unique name, so that it may be used in a program. Now, we need to also understand what exactly an instance variable is. Now, an instance variable is a member variable in which each instantiated object of the class has a separate copy or instance. This means that data changes to one variable in one instanced object will not change another variable in another instanced object. Now, if you declare a member variable with a fixed data type, the compiler will do its best to typecast to a specified data type if you were to accidentally try to pass in a different data type. So let's say your instance variable, you declared it with a data type string, but during runtime, you accidentally pass it an integer value. What the compiler will do is change your integer value into a string value, basically wrapping your integer value inside double quotations. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example of an instance variable. Keep in mind for this example, we'll be looking at non-static variables in our player class. Non-static versus static variables are out of topic for this video and GDScript as a language. However, for those of you that know programming, a non-static variable is pretty important when we're talking about instance variables and code isolation of our member variables. Knowing the difference between static versus non-static is important. However, in GDScript, we always deal with non-static variables. So our non-static variable A from our player class has the initial value of the literal integer 100. Now we're creating two object variables, object one and object two, and we're instantiating the player class into these objects. Now object one has the value A, and of course it has 100 because we're basically copying the class into our variable. And the same thing for object two, we're taking the variable name and value assigned to it from player class into our object two. Now, when we change the value of object one, in this case assigned a string value to our A, notice how we're not changing the value in object two. This is because each object has a separate copy of the variables they receive from the main class or the instantiated class, in this case, our player class. So just keep in mind when you create object variables or rather if you instantiate class objects, all member variables are isolated to their own object. Now, moving on, when exactly is it a good time to use instance objects? Well, a good time to know you need to use instance objects is when you want to work with multiple items or copies of the class. Let's take having multiple enemies on the screen as an example. Now, first, before you can actually instantiate an object, you need to create a class. In this case, we've created our enemy class and we are registering a name into the editor. I personally find using class name keywords as a cleaner way of writing code. Now, again, we have our class name and we are registering the name enemy to the editor. We have a simple variable A and we have a function called print A that basically just prints the variable A or 100 to the console. One thing to note is that there's no extends keyword. That's because we don't need to inherit anything if we don't plan on adding this class to the scene tree. Now, moving on, if you want to create an object, first you use the registered name, in this case, enemy, followed by the new keyword or the new method. Now you can also create a class object with file paths. However, it's gonna take you two lines of code to do that. Let me show you why. First, you need to load your class into the current class. In this case, we need to load the enemy class into our scene script class. And we do that, we load the class by simply using the load keyword followed by an absolute or relative path inside. Notice the double quotations, it's a string value. You have to pass inside your load method the global load method. Now, after you've loaded your class and assigned it to a variable, in this case, load class, what you then do is you call that variable and then you use the new method. Basically, this is no different than what we have earlier, except now we have to use two lines of code instead of one. 
Now, the class name, when we register our name to the editor, behind the scenes, we are centrally loading it. The loading is done for you, and that's why all you need to do is declare the new method. However, the choice is yours. I personally like to keep my code clean, so I like to use the class name keyword. So I only have to write one line of code instead of two, but the choice is up to you. Moving on, if you want to use a class object, simply use the variable name of your instance object. In this case, the variable we've, we've created a copy of is the object variable. So use the object variable followed by the function name in your instance object, or you can even use member variables. Just remember to omit the parentheses. Moving on, it's pretty boring to have multiple objects with the same exact values. Now the power of instance objects is the variation you can have in your object properties. To make objects unique from other objects, simply use the built-in class constructor. To do that, simply use the initialize method, or init for short. When you use this method inside your class, that class constructor method is called when the class is instantiated. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. What we have is a function, init, and we take in a parameter. Now, you don't have to take in a parameter, but at that point, why bother use the initialize function? One thing to keep in mind is that if you declare a parameter inside your initialize method, but when you decide to create an instance object of that class without a parameter, you will throw an error. So keep that in mind. If you use an initialize and you declare parameters, when you create an instance object, you need to specify the parameters. Now, to avoid this error, we simply assign a default value. To assign a default value to a parameter, simply just use the equal sign followed by the literal value. This will avoid an error if you forget to pass a value. You can also infer data type by simply using the colon symbol followed by the equal sign. And not only will you have assigned a default value to a parameter, but you would have also declared a data type, which is inferred by the literal value you're passing it to. If you decide to use the constructor method in your class to pass a value to your constructor method, all you need to simply do is use the new keyword and then just put your value inside the parentheses. And if you have multiple parameters, simply separate each value with a comma symbol. To do this with file paths, you simply, wait, let me add the value. You simply pass the value into your new method. It's the same thing. Again, one line of code if you register your class name to the editor, and two lines of code if you decide to use file paths to create your instanced object. Now let's go ahead and look at some code. So I have here a class name, and I've declared a member variable with the data type string. So our variable only accepts data types of string values. Now we have our constructor method, and we, we can pass a value. And I've also defaulted the value to the string literal value called enemy. Most of the time when you take in a value in your class constructor, you basically want to pass that value and assign it to a member variable. So we take that value and we assign it to our member variable name. Basically, you as a programmer, if you want to use this method, you have a choice. You can choose to create an instance object with no values passed in the constructor and our name simply defaults to enemy or you can create an instance object and pass in a new name to core enemy. Now, what we have is a function and it just simply prints to the console, my name is followed by the name you pass. So it will either be enemy by default or a custom name you choose. By itself, this doesn't do anything. As you notice here, we don't have an extends keyword because we're not going to assign this to the scene tree. In real life production, you most likely will, but in this example, we aren't. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our main script, which will be used in the scene tree. Notice the extends node keyword. As you can see here, we can create multiple instanced objects. We have two variables, enemy one, enemy two, and we're going to create an instance object of our enemy class. In this case, the first line will have the name default. And in the second line, the name is Gene Gray. Now, when we press the play button, notice how enemy one's name, notice how the member variable can be changed if we call it directly from the object. In this case, we can access member variables from our object, or we can access functions from our object. 
Simply use the variable name followed by dot notation followed by either the member variable name or the function name. Now in this case, we have print enemy. Oh, no. Let me change that. In this case, we're printing to the screen no name. Now it's going to print enemy if we don't change this value here. This is the example I wanted to show. Now we're going to print enemy because we didn't change the member variable after declaration. If you initialize a value, that's the value it is assigned. And then after initialization, you can go ahead and feel free to change the initialized value for your instanced variable. Now in the second line, we have a, again, we're doing a simple function, but in this case from enemy to object, and that prints out Jean Grey. Now this is an interesting thing. If you were to assign or accidentally assign a value of a different data type. Keep in mind our member variable name can only accept data type strings. So if we try to assign the value 100 to the value name, we're not going to throw an error. What's going to happen is we're going to, or rather the system is going to try its best to cast this as a string. In this case, when we call the simple function out, which prints to the console, what we're going to print is 100. And I put double quotations because what what the compiler ends up doing is it takes your integer value and just typecasts it as a string. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. I'm going to go ahead and upload this script, or rather both scripts, to GitHub. So feel free to download that file or the project and play around with instance objects. I hope you learned a lot about class objects and constructor methods and how to make your class objects unique. Thank you for joining me in this episode. I'll see you in the next.